in the musical theater canon now, these two characters, Kathy and Jamie, they they're characters. We all know them. If you're a musical theater kid, you know Kathy and Jamie, but you all you all knew him first. <laughs> So talk to me about the development process of the last five years and truly um, discovering these characters for the first time. Some stuff. When I went in for my initial audition and I got a call back, then he had me do a work session with him at his apartment. And um, at that point, there there was only like two songs he had written for Kathy. Like, and I think a cu- just a few for Jamie as well. I mean, it was okay. not fully written at all. So Norbert and I had this really incredible experience of those songs really being informed by us too, as singers and actors. So uh, I think he had written still hurting and he had written, I can do better than that mm-hmm. for Kathy for Kathy. And that was it. (laughs) And so a lot of the songs were written, you know, once I was cast and once Norbert was cast. So that was really a a, 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 like rare experience. Um, Now, again, like I said earlier, I'm sure he had it all in his brain and was just ready to vomit it up one day. But um, it was really, really special because we felt like we were so on the ground floor. And, um, you know, I just I, I didn't you know, besides the fact that my name was Kennedy and, you know, she was a, a you know, an Irish girl before she was the Shiksa goddess that I was like, oh, yeah, that's why I'm cast. Kennedy was a great name for that. Little did he know I'm actually Scottish, but <laughs> <laughs> um, but it was it was amazing. And then getting to do like some demo stuff and being in the studio with Norbert and then like the rehearsal process was just like. And it was like nothing I had ever experienced before because I had done new shows, but never like a two hander or never like the lead. And um, and and with somebody like Jason, who I had also auditioned for Parade and he didn't remember me. As a matter of fact, he saw me in a show <laughs> at Paper Mill Playhouse and famously tells a story where he thought I was terrible in it. <laughs> <laughs> and he told me that like he even announced me on stage one time by saying she was completely miscast. She was absolutely terrible. And nine in paper mill playhouse, ladies and gentlemen, Lauren Kennedy. <laughs> I was like, Oh my God. No, it was hilarious. <laughs> um, but I, that's also a great like story because you don't ruin your chances with people just because you, you know, you may not be amazing in one show. At least he gave me a chance to come in and sing for him, but I think he was a hundred percent like, Oh, it's not going to be her. <laughs> <laughs> and then it ended up being me. So you never know. Yeah. Um, but yeah, it, it, working with Norbert though, like was one of those unbelievably inspired moments where, you know, Norbert, if you will allow me to say a few th- nice things about you, or maybe even air some dirty laundry. He he's the least precious actor on the planet. Like he's an amazing actor and he's like, to his gut, he's like the real deal, but not precious and doesn't like overthink things. He's just super inspired. And um, it was such, it was so cool to work with him because anything he said or did was just interesting and smart and heart and felt deeply felt. And I truly believe that working with him made me a better actor. Like I was not a great actor until that point. I didn't even know what I was doing. I thought about it too much. You know, I was like writing all the stupid musical theater things like, where am I going? What do I want? Who am I? What has somebody said about me? What do I say about myself? I was just thinking too hard. And Norbert comes in and he's like, whatever. (laughs) And he's so good. It's just so naturally good. Obviously you had training. Don't get me wrong. But uh. <laughs> there are things about Norbert that you can't teach. You know, he's just, he's just that interesting and just that good. And he makes everybody else that, around that him is, better. That is quite enough. I, I, I'll now, <laughs> I'll, I'll, I'll now take a pen to all of your delusional balloons, but that's very <laughs> sweet of you to say. It was an amazing time. I have such great memories of working with Lauren on that. Um, the process for me and Lauren, I I had forgotten that. And you are absolutely right. There were like four or five songs, you know, um, you're so, I had forgotten that, man. It was like. You've done a lot of things since then. (laughs) Um, I didn't know what I was getting involved in. It's so funny. You should say he commented on a play you had done. So as I said, um, I am more experienced in musicals. I know I have these Tony Awards or whatever, but the truth about me is that I 
don't have a lot of ex- didn't especially during the last five years have very much experience in musical theater at all i had done two professional musicals and they were both on broadway mm-hmm. um my first musical i was ever in professional was rent on broadway mm-hmm. because like i said i I always sang and I always played music. I always had bands and I'm a guitar player, duos and trio, all that kind of stuff. And I always continued to study, but I was in the acting department. So I was busy all through my 20s. After I did my master's, I I worked in regional theaters, but in plays only, nobody even knew I sang. It was like what I did with my friend in bars and club, blah, blah, blah. And then um, Jason had seen me in Rent. And I think that's how I had, he had originally come I got the audition for parade for the workshop and parade. Um, but I was in a, I got cast and then we had a few weeks or something before rehearsals were starting. And I was in another play. I was doing this extremely violent, volatile play off Broadway at, um, uh, a theater for new audience. It was a play called saved and it's a 1968 political play by a, writer named edward bond and it has i played a member of this british british like punk group of punks and in 1968 the play was shut down because these punks perform an extremely violent act on kind of an imaginary kid upstage it's this it's a play all about uh poverty and its effects on society and it's extremely bleak and my character was the leader of this violent gang So Jason and Daisy, I don't know if you were there and I'm like, yay, our Jamie is in a play. Let's go see Jamie in a play. And they, no one knows anything about it. It was directed by Robert Woodruff. Who's this really dark experimental director. I had this, I was in this whole other world, you know, (laughs) and Jason came and saw her afterwards. He was ashen. He was tell in his face. What have I done? Because the character I was playing was, absolutely horrendous um and i think he was a little scared of me Uh, (laughs) but when we got into the room i i agree with what what lauren said there's something about the 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 beauty of a small cast of two people of three and a director it just means that there's only four or five people in the room at any given time and you just become like a band Mm-hmm. like a band of brothers and sisters. It's very intimate. Lauren and I had never met before. We didn't know each other. And like, she's one of my dearest friends in the business. And that was within like two weeks, you know, you do this kind of fast track and with a piece like that, you have to, you just, I, I had this similar experience with Sherry Scott off Broadway. Those characters are, you're opening your hearts to each other. You're singing in each other's faces, huge notes, you know, you're falling in and out. Of, there just has to be so much trust. There just has to be that permission in the room to say, hey, go for it. And um, I think because I didn't have more experience in musical theater, I didn't know what the rules were. So I just, I think maybe that's what Lauren's talking about, where I just kind of went for it. But having said that, we like really worked on it. Like, oh yeah, Daisy was our, our director, Daisy Prince, daughter of the legendary Hal Prince, of course coolest sweetest warmest uh, coolest lady and we did we sat down and you got to do the math a little bit you got to fill in dramaturgically all of the stuff we we rehearsed in different ways remember lauren sometimes we ran the show in perfect order order. Mm. sometimes we would only do jamie's stuff sometimes we would only do kathy's stuff we would work with the show rehearsing it in a different order to try to see what that would bring. Yeah, because if you think about it, like now it's part of the canon that people know so well and everybody knows the sort of the way it goes backwards and they meet in the middle or Kathy goes backwards. But for us, we were like, "Eh, what is this? (laughs) Why did Jason think this is a great idea? You know, and it was like, uh, it was was kind of a hard sell. And I remember- It was very hard because when you start that show, you start- the actress playing Kathy has to spend 15 minutes preparing, you know, getting in that dark place for that first song. Jamie's got to come in and right away start belting high ass notes. So he's got to be pumped. The audience is like, whoa, whoa, that's a whole yeah. lot of emotions coming in. And we don't even know you people. Like we yeah. don't even know you. So the audience is dropped in well into the action. They don't know if they care about these people. Why should we care that this couple breaks up? People break up every day. Like it was odd. And they 
you could see them sitting back like, hmm, yeah, assessing. not enjoying it, but in a kind of a cerebral place. Yeah. You could feel that from the audience. It was really tricky to not go on the front foot. You know, we want to be liked so much. We want the applause. We want them. And this show doesn't work like that. The actors have to just like really trust. Don't worry about the audience. And then you got to tell that story to each other. Yeah. Um, I mean, and, totally. That's a, that's a really interesting thing. That the, was hard you know, Lauren. Me. Yeah. Lauren would be out there belting her face off and the applause would be like, <laughs> like very polite. Same thing with all of Jamie's songs. And it wasn't that she's we weren't doing a great job. They're literally putting a puzzle piece together while this music is washing over them. Yeah. It's a very tricky play to get right in yeah. the same way that. um Sometimes um, merrily we roll along is very difficult to get right. Anytime you have that conceit, you're instantly taking the audience from an emotional place to a cerebral place. Right. Um, and they want to feel, but they just yeah. think it. And then the it slowly starts to come. So it's a genius thing that he's done. It it's a is. genius thing. If, if he didn't have that cerebral kind of distance from the piece you wouldn't be able to handle all the emotions so he removes the audience in almost like an expressionistic way so mm -hmm. that you can begin to put this apart and then the so the audience has got to do their work they got it and a smart writer a smart director makes the audience do their work they you know and again like because it's so known in the vernacular now that everybody knows how it goes and you're going to anytime you watch it you pretty much know what's going to happen but when Norbert and I were doing it at Northlight nobody knew nobody knew the show at all and it was so fascinating to also we would go out and have drinks and stuff afterwards and sometimes meet up with friends or people would see us while we were out and it was very like team Jamie team Kathy like depending on the night there would be people who were like wow no you're a crazy bee or like what an asshole sorry you yeah. can get that out but um you know they they definitely like got got um invested in sort of the storytelling because it was um it was so brand new it was so fresh and they didn't know what was happening they didn't know what they were experiencing and it was really wild i'd never kind of had that experience before but you um just had to, you just had to trust uh -huh. that we were telling the story and, and just let it worry be. about you know uh, Daisy and Daisy will make sure they get it, but we just have to commit to, to the emotion of the songs. But I also felt like too, for me, um, because I was going backwards and to Norbert's point, I literally did like for 10, 15 minutes before the show, I had to think about like all the things that would get me in the right place. And I was always, and still am to a certain extent, sort of thought of as somebody who's more like sunny and frothy and not like your deep, you know, dark actress and so it You're was very so, deep well you, I, I the older you i got deep and sunny you're deep and sunny <laughs> <laughs> and honestly i think the last five years really helped to open up that that part of me because what ended up happening was kathy is an incredibly flawed human and um and it was also hard for jason to write because it was you know based on a real life um scenario that he had to be kind of like walk the right line. And so, it, you know, she did have some darkness and she had some, you know, things that were really not, you know, perfect. Um, at least the character that I was creating at the time, that that's what it felt like. But what helped me make her more interesting was the fact that it did go backwards. So in essence, I started super dark, but that darkness informed the whole show for me. So even when she was young, even when she was like, I can do better than that or had the whole world in front of her, it was still a little like there was something underneath. And I loved that as an exercise, as an actress, it really mm. helped me. And the way that Daisy directed it, was we played in each other's scenes. So when Norbert was singing, if I didn't believe in you, I was literally looking at him taking it. So he was singing this whole thing to me. And I was like, you know, went through my experience as his scene partner, but then had to turn around and sing, I can do better than that. So I'm like on the verge of tears. And then we're in the car and we're going to meet my parents. And so it had this awesome layer of like, oh, you know, like, you know, like resentment towards him already, even though she was, you know, hopeful of her future, but she was still already resentful and it helped me play that. So I loved it. It was amazing. Yeah. And similarly, J uh, Jamie starts with this, this, this boyish, brash exuberance and, and hope 
about the future. And that hope is just barely lit at the end when he's destroyed and heartbroken. It's, 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 that's what, that's what finally allows the audience to, to feel. And it's kind of gorgeous what he does. The audience doesn't get the full emotion of the piece until the last, mm -hmm. until the last moment of the play, which is very difficult to do. It's difficult to end a play. It's one of the hardest things to do. It's so hard. And to, to end a play at the right time, which is when the play ends, mm -hmm. like the play ends because this is the right time for the play to end. And to really get that, it's almost impossible. We've all seen plays where it's like, oh, this is the third ending. Uh, like, <laughs> right? <that>. Totally. <laughs> Not with him. It's so beautifully constructed and it goes and the da da, the, the waltz turns in, the waltz, they walk around each other, they turn to each other, lights out, and yeah. the audience gets the whole experience in that blackout. It's yeah. a real special piece in that way. Mm. Um, that yeah. is not true. How how did the experience developing that work? Because it was fairly early in both of your careers that 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 experience. How how did that experience inform the the looking forward? How you became, you know, how how did that inform your artistry as performers, as actors, you know, going forward? I, I mean, yeah. Uh, you the, the the director Joe Mantello, who directed me in Wicked and a couple of other things, he he was a he is a brilliant actor. And Joe always told the story, you know, Joe famously was in the original production of Angels in America, um, the original Broadway production. And um, <clears throat> he played Lewis and was nominated for a Tony Award. And that was his first big job in New York. And he was talking about the challenge of when your first experience is the greatest play written in a hundred years. <laughs> it, it, it's, 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 you're so lucky, but at the same time, it's really tricky because you're like, Ah, what do you do after Angels in America? I know what that I know what that kind of work feels like, and that's rare air. And it's similarly to the last five years, if that's your benchmark for what a score should sound like and what you're looking for in character development, I mean, I'll be honest, I haven't really had a role since um, that I've had. I've played many great roles, but in musicals. No, no, not even close where I got to use all of my voice, all of me, all of my, all of me, a holistic experience. Very, very, very rare for, actually it's rare for men in musical theater, especially when you get into your, you know, Jamie's a young character, you get into your forties and fifties and there's, there's not a lot of, there's still great roles. There's not a lot of great singing roles for men in there. It was like Sweeney Todd, you know? Don Quixote, okay, name two more, but those are really kind of, like there's not a lot of them, and that's a score that allows, um, you know, just for for that kind of of singing. It's yeah, I concur. Like the bar was set so high. <laughs> I mean, I I knew it the second I heard those two songs that he had written even pre audition. Um, that I was just like, oh, this is the music that I've been waiting to sing. And I was only all of like 27, I think, when we started the process. Oh and God, I know that's crazy. Now I'm turning 50. But yeah, um, I'm 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 55. I'm, I'm I don't I was want to 27. Talk about much, I was you are always so much younger than me. We all know <laughs> it. Thank you for reminding us. I was a baby. Um, but no, Lord, it, I had totally forgotten we did a, the reading of honeymoon in vegas as well yes oh yeah totally oh, that was that. a broadway cast baby that i've was done another cover. one I, I, anywhere time he calls me oh yeah sing. forget it drop everything you know just for sure. go. well i was just gonna say on top of like it's setting such a high bar for me in terms of like what my expectation was as i was moving forward as an artist also because the the irony of me not being able to do it when we went to new york um so while we were in rehearsals at 890, I literally got the call from my agent that I got cast in South Pacific and Norbert was, was he intimately knows how much I struggled with that decision if I was going to do it or not. Funnily enough, he had already been cast in Thou Shalt Not. So I actually thought it was going to be him that wasn't going to be able to do it if we went to New York. And then it ended Lauren, up being- uh, Let me explain to Lauren. <laughs> let me explain to Lauren. We did Skokie yeah. and then the, the show went into kind of a, a, a legal- 
um, no yeah. man's land for a while. There was a time when it was like, uh, while it was being sort of held up in some litigation, we weren't sure if it was going to yeah, happen. The idea was it was going to, they couldn't, they were like, you're our people. We want you to stay, but we understand if you have, we have to no go. New York producers, we don't know what's going to happen. And I was so like, Lauren gets this amazing opportunity. She's like, God, I want to, but I got to go take this. It was, yeah, was so, Nelly in South Pacific at the national. I mean, it's this huge yeah, job. I mean, it's just, I had to do it. And, and I, I left to go do a job. I went left to go originate my first role on Broadway in this Harry Connick junior musical that just, happened to be a big bomb and we uh we uh, previews uh 9-11 was during previews and we we just never we ran it for a couple months and not even and then we it closed so i was available when they got their legal stuff fixed they got the space at the um Meta. Meta lane um and it kind of happened quickly and then it was like and then in, Lauren was, you know, and ultimately, as I look back on my life, I mean, to me is the way it worked out the way it was supposed to work out, because actually when I knew that was going to happen and I wasn't going to be able to do it, I was like, well, I, you know, Jason and I became such good friends and collaborators. And I loved, like I said, I was obsessed with the music, like anybody would be, um, that I wrote him and I was like, Hey, listen, I I've been wanting to do an album. Um, can will you do it with me? Can we do? Can we do like? Can can I, can I do like a Lauren sings Jason situation? He was like, okay. I didn't expect him to say yes, and I was like, oh, now I've got to do it. Um, but again, like to me in the big picture of life, that I wanted to be associated with him and and his music and the the crazy like left hand turn that I didn't know was going to be a thing is it taught me how to be a producer. It was the it was the project that I like developed. I hired, I got insurance. I hired musicians. We did charts. I booked rooms, you know, and it's like, I learned how to do what I'm doing now on that and learned how to direct and do like tell a whole story with one you know piece of art, mm. which was the album. So it was incredibly serendipitous to me. And in so many ways, um, put me on the trajectory of my second career, which I never really saw coming. So, you know, so it worked cool. out the way it was supposed to. And thank goodness for us here in Raleigh that you've had the second career. Um, it's extraordinary um, what you are doing to the art scene. I mean, it was extraordinary when you were at the Kennedy Theater, but now I, I just feel like we have this campus. Um, I, yes, that's in North <laughs> so it's amazing. You're you're coming to Theater Raleigh to do this concert. Lauren, mm -hmm. I love, I, I knew all, I knew all the Broadway stars lived in Lauren's attic. I've known that for a long time. I used to go to her house. They used to descend down the stairs. And I used to, you know, well, I used like, to well, literally they, house people at my house, by the way, not anymore. They, they all lived up in her attic. I was sure of it. Um, <laughs> they do that. They do that. People like me continue to show up for things at Raleigh as many, many of my friends do. And that's just a testament to the leader that she's adored. And so that is something that Raleigh should really treasure in Lauren Kennedy, because I think you're, when your leadership has the, those resources, you only have those resources when you are just a really good person and people <laughs> are like, Oh, I want to be around that. that energy. That's an energy that I could be around. That's who you want in leadership positions. You know what I mean? Because then, they, then there are they are people who bring together, not people who say, <laughs> you know. So good no, on I you. Mean, when I decided to do this concert series, you know, Norbert was the first person I called, and he was like, "Yeah, let's do yeah, it." But I Lauren, I looked at the other people <laughs> you got to come down there. It's fantastic, I Rachel. Know, Bay, I Rachel know. and and um, Beth. Beth came last year. She's so That's fantastic. I mean, yeah. these are like. No, well, so that level, like, that level was definitely my the first time I had, you know, done that. But she's a Raleigh girl, and I've known her since I was in high school. And she is was she like from daughter. Raleigh. She's from Raleigh, she went to my same high school. Get so you know, here, we did man. it as like a fundraiser with the United Arts Council here, um, and so it, we just you know kind of killed some birds with one stone, and it made me think like. Oh, I do have access to a lot of amazing people. You really, really do. <laughs> so why am I not cashing, not cashing in, but like, why am I not, you know, making that opportunity for- You're smart too, because you spread it. You, 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 you like I said, it, it's a really good thing in the leadership to have that, yeah. that large roster 
because yeah. then you don't overstay your welcome with anybody. You know what I mean? And a person in your position and Lauren, you know, I have my not for profit. I get it. It's, it's yeah. favor oh. asking. It's humbling yourself. It's being sure, like, sure. this person's yeah. going to think I'm an asshole. Oh, well, I'll take yeah. it. I can yeah. handle it. Well, I, and I haven't really done it much before. I mean, I, I, you know, we bring, you know, New York actors in for our shows all the time. Um, but when it comes to like a Norbert Leo Butts, I haven't been like, hey, Norbert, come do a show in my theater. But I thought, well, you know, I, I know he loves to sing out. I know he's been doing concerts at 54 Below and here, there and everywhere because I've sung but with you. you. Are, but, but you are getting yeah. really, really well-established people to come down there and do those shows. It's yeah, kind no, of- it's true. I mean, I've, I'm so grateful for the response that we've had. People really enjoy working at the theater and love the city of Raleigh. So it's been good to, you know, that's one thing I can say is like, all right, well, we can't pay much, but you're going to love being in Raleigh. <laughs> it's so great. And we'll treat it you great. great. But well, um, yeah, so it's definitely one of those things where I wanted to expose this, um, this community to to folks like you and, and keep our, our lights on, so to speak all the time and have as much entertainment in these walls on our campus as possible. I love it. Will we see, uh, um, some last five years? We may, (laughs) or we may not, (laughs) but I think we may, but we may not. (laughs) <laughs> we're going to keep you guessing but we'll just have to buy tickets and oh, come <laughs> well there's not many left so you better get on it if you want to come see norbert leo butts because there's not many left mm. though we might add some we might add some standing room or student rush or something because oh. um, one of the one of the main things norbert said when we first started talking he said i want to make sure that it, you know it's affordable for people to come see and it's you know students and up and comers and people interested in you know living yeah. this great lifestyle can can come and so we've we've priced it at a wide range so it's affordable that's awesome yeah every, oh, yeah. E- every now and then on social media i will see a, a video of the two of you in that 2001 production of the last five years um there there's some you know it's like broadway history and then there's lauren <laughs> kennedy singing <laughs> i'm on broadway <laughs> um, when, when, when you look at those videos and 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 that experience, what advice would you give your twenty something, thirty something, those people in that video now knowing what you what you know now? Oh my God. Um, mm-hmm. hmm. What would I give? What would I tell my younger self? I don't know that I would tell my younger self anything. I look back on the last five years and I, I, I told you the story. He played me two songs and I had to go to the bathroom. And I, the, the real secret of the last five years is that I didn't know when I started the last five years that my own marriage was falling apart. I was, it was this very weird thing where I'm doing this play about this relationship falling apart, even some of the dynamics in the show. It was a really strange experience. And so my first wife and I were divorced like a year after the last five years. Close. Like, so during the last five years, and it had started before that is as well. Um, I, I, I guess I, I look back with some, with some pride that I, that I got through it. I had two small daughters. Um, it was a really hard saying, my I was I was playing a guy in a complicated marriage and I said a really complicated marriage. And I I I got through it as 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 best I can. I had great, great scene partners. Um if I had to do it again, I would tell my younger self to not drink so much or smoke <laughs> cigarettes in between numbers because I was still doing things like that. <laughs> I, I used to drink and smoke a lot. I stopped a long time ago, oh my God. but I would be singing that score, <laughs> Laura knows, and then I'd go out the back door and like have cigarettes. Or in New York, I would sing that score in between shows and then go down to the Mineta Tavern and have like two vodka tonics and then go on and sing it again. I I definitely would have taken better care of. I always took good care of my voice, but I uh, I would have eliminated the uh, substance <laughs> uh, uh, out much much younger in my life. And I think I, what I was doing was the show was so emotional. I found after doing it a while, I no longer had a filter, 
and it felt scary to be out there. Sometimes it felt like the emotions that were controlling me and me not controlling them. And I didn't understand it at the time because I, I it wasn't we we knew something was going on but it was like boiling underneath it wasn't until like the year after the last five years where, where it really fell apart and long story short i have a much better ending to my story than kathy and my ex-wife and <laughs> two beautiful daughters we are dear friends um we parent together um and we've raised two beautiful girls and you know it's and she's she and my wife she's been fantastic to my wife i mean i'm so lucky so 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 lucky but i but dealing with both of those things that your stage life can sometimes um be totally unlike your character that you're playing and sometimes it can be quite similar and those are those are those are good roles because you're really working with the real stuff but they can be kind of dangerous after after a while so maybe i've been a little easier on the on the Sunday after after show drinks, but um, <laughs> we had some fun though. Um, we should. Go. I I would say I would give myself the advice of just like, hey, girl, you could drink. Calm down. No, I drink. I would drink, and I'd have a couple you cigarettes could. with you too, for sure. Oh no, you didn't. Okay. I don't remember it. You would have done it just to be. When I yeah. say a couple, I think I had two with you <laughs> for fun. <laughs> um, I was not a smoker. I never was though. But yeah. I definitely, we definitely had a good time. I mean, it was a 70 minute show and the two of us were like, it was yeah. over at eight, like eight twenty Cause it started like seven thirty. whatever. I can't do math, yeah. but it was over really early. And it was just like, we would rent movies and Jason was there and Tom Murray, who's now the, you know, conductor of parade and um, Mary, who was the cellist. There was like a four or five of us that were just like this little crew in yeah. like Spokey, Illinois. And so, you know, we would just like hang out. We all became really good friends and it was a really fun time. But um, I would tell myself to just calm down a little bit, like relax, <laughs> you know, you're going to be fine. You don't have to be a star. Just love the work, love the, you know, the experiences. And, um, you know, I stressed about my voice all the time. It was such a big thing. And I was in the prime of my vocal life. And I don't know why I was so worried and why I cared so, so much, um, which sometimes, by the way, makes it worse, you know, makes it harder to sing when you're so focused on it. Those were like life lessons that I learned um, in that that sort of period of time with that kind of pressure of that show on me. Um, and I just really, really, really wanted to be good. And I just, I would gripped, you know, I gripped a little bit more. So it, my, the 50 year old Lauren would look back and say, calm down. You're enough. You're fine. You're going to be great. Relax. So. All right. Well, we have a chance okay. to do it differently next week. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs>